king land. Ever since I was a child, I had the feeling that something is missing in me. I want to know why I'm here. Can any of us know that? Become yourself. Then God and the devil don't matter. My name is Hendrik, and we welcome you to another Red Eyes radio program. We are now into the year 2013, and we are going beyond everything known into the unknown. RedEyesCreations.com and RedEyesMembers.com, two of our websites that you should note if you want to follow us on a regular basis. And we cover anything that we consider to be interesting and important. Byron Belitzos is an award-winning publisher who has been editor of many acclaimed books. He is a longtime student of the Urantia book, and he's the co-author of The Adventure of Being Human. We are going to discuss the main cosmology that is presented in the Urantia book today. This book was first published by the Urantia Foundation in 1955, claiming to have been presented by celestial beings as a revelation to our planet, Urantia. We'll talk about the book's instruction on Genesis, the destiny of humanity, and one of the central themes, which is that of the rebellion of Lucifer. Byron will also tell us about the angelic hierarchy and the correcting time, and we'll begin on the origin of this mysterious book. All right, welcome to Red Eyes Radio, Byron. It's uh, great to have you with us. Thank you for coming on and uh, talking with us today. Looking forward to this one. Thanks, Henrik. It's an honor to be on your show. Excellent. We've wanted to do a program about the Urantia book for quite some time now, and this is one of those uh, topics, I guess, that for some reason it hasn't happened sooner. But again, here we are, we're doing it, and we're, of course, opening up the subject uh, with you today, Byron. So why don't we uh, talk, first of all, about how uh, you got involved in the Urantia book when you first, I guess, heard about it and when you wanted to um, dedicate some of your time to work with the book and obviously promote uh, the message in it. Uh, it actually began uh, quite a long time ago when I was a student in college at the University of Chicago when I was uh, studying um, intellectual history, European uh, history of ideas. And uh, I was really uh, engaged in, in uh, a lot of questions that I, I, I did not find answers to from professors and from uh, books that I was reading. And it was around that time that just by total coincidence, I ran into somebody who uh, mentioned the Urantia book. And that was really quite early. It was really very much unknown in those days, except in very limited circles in the United States and in France and a few other places. Um, and for whatever reason, it just immediately appealed to me. I, intuitively, I knew there was something special about it, and I didn't accept the the claim of off-planet uh, pedigree right away. But um, uh, something, uh, it really rang truth bells uh, in me, and particularly the parts about history since I was a student of history and I, right away I began I became a student of those parts of the ranch book and then it, it just progressed from there and it's been really one of my main hobbies uh, throughout my my adult life sounds very interesting uh, we love talking about history and and uh, we'll, we'll get into some of that later of course but let's cover some of the basics in the beginning some of the some of the you know questions that are obvious here well, first of all what does urantia mean yeah, Urantia is the uh, purported name of our planet, according to the rest of the universe. So the off-planet uh, 
uh, celestial hierarchy and also uh, extraterrestrial visitors use that name or the equivalent of that name uh, in designation for us. So Urantia book refers to the name of the planet Urantia. And so let's get into who is behind it. Uh, we can just, you know, break this up in two different segments. Of course, the, the words themselves are written by somebody, but it's also a, a another author or several maybe authors. Uh, break this down for us, Farn. Uh, yeah, there's numerous um, uh, s supposed uh, celestial beings who are the authors of these papers, and there's 196, uh, they're called papers, they're like large chapters. And um, the the way this, uh, the story of how this comes about is, uh, goes back to all the way to 1906, when uh, a, a very small group of people had a kind of uh, channeled uh, celestial contact through uh, a person who we still do not know the name of this person. The person is uh, anonymous, as many guesses as to who it was. But uh, there was, uh, it was sort of an Edgar Casey style contact where the person was completely asleep and deep sleep and voices would come through this person. And uh, after a period of time, these voices announced that they were to present to these people around this person a, uh, a very large revelatory text. And, and a, a number of years passed as they kind of uh, debriefed these people, they were based in Chicago, <clears throat> uh, th these angelic beings began to sort of uh, orient these people to what they wanted to do. And what they uh, had intended to do was to present a very, uh, an epical revelation to the planet. And they, uh, we now know that there were other locations and other groups that were being uh, cultivated for this purpose. And finally, they chose to, uh, this group seemed to have the right composition, the right location, the right mentality. So the, the, the revelation uh, process formally begins in 1924. And, and uh, at this point, it's a, a, a rather different process of uh, not the Edgar Casey style channeling, but the actual appearance or materialization of these, these papers, these chapters. So... Uh, who, who do you, who kind of picked the group? Do you think is that was this a uh, a criteria from from this group that was well maybe not channeled them but in the Edgar Casey kind of style received? Did they have an outline of who they wanted to well give this to? I guess. Uh, you mean that that, that they uh, survey sort of the human groups uh, from above and then select them? Uh, right, right, something like that. I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they, really what it is is, uh, you know, when these uh, events uh, transpire uh, in the interactions between the celestial realms and humans, uh, apparently they, they do massive surveys and they look for the right, the right people that have the stamina and the intelligence uh, to carry it off. And that, that's also the case with uh, the choice of, uh, of uh, the parents of Jesus, uh, we get into that later. That they they were chosen from among many of the parents uh, in 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 Palestine to be the bearers of uh, Jesus of Nazareth, who is a very very important figure in the Orange Book. So, uh, but coming back to the Orange Book itself, they um, identified this group uh, because assembling uh, around uh, the group actually assembled around a, a particularly um, world class. Uh, intellectual and, and leader, a guy named Bill Sadler, who was a professor at the University of Chicago. He was a, a, a surgeon and, and a psychiatrist. Just back then, he could be both a surgeon and a psychiatrist. Uh, and he um, was the kind of became the, the leader of this group over the next uh, 40 years, 50 years. So really, it was, it was about him and his wife um, named Lena Sadler, also a physician, Dr. Lena Sadler, that uh, they, they identified them as, as the best uh, people to carry this very difficult, unusual project forward. And they did uh, until their death, both of them. And, and their, this lar large entourage that formed around them of several hundred people uh, over, over these decades. Uh, and that group uh, became the bearers of this, of this revelation. And they were called the uh, the contact commission, correct? Uh, yeah, there's uh, several groups. There's the contact personality, the anonymous person. Then there's the contact commission, which is this inner core of people I mentioned earlier. There were uh, really in, in sort of the, the classic period of this, there were six people who were the uh, the contact personalities that had 
verbal uh, interactions uh, through the, the anonymous uh, subject. We call him the sleeping subject. And then around them in uh, sort of an, uh, in sort of the uh, concentric circles around them were, uh, was another group called the Forum. And the Forum is, uh, were just friends and acquaintances and actually patients of Dr. Sadler and his wife, uh, Lena Sadler, that they invited into uh, the, the secret gatherings where they would present these papers that were materializing. <laughs> mm. So, you know, um, I, let me stop there and let you ask a question. Okay, okay, it. sure, definitely. Um, well, it's very, uh, it's very interesting. We want to get into this, of course, and uh, all about the material and everything. But uh, the first copy, I think, of the, of the papers in a book format was uh, first published in, in 1955, correct? Yeah, 1955, it was first published, but the book was actually completed uh, some years before that. But they had a lot of proofreading to do, typesetting. But also the Celestials asked them uh, to wait a bit after World War II before they published it for a variety of reasons. So there was a bit of a delay in there. So it, 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 the book is was really current by uh, the late 40s, current in terms of known hum, you know, human um, knowledge uh, in the late 40s, and then there was this uh, period of delay until 1955. So that's the thing. Yeah. All right. I, I mean, I know this is a lot about listening to the the message, of course, and not about the messenger or getting kind of obsessed about that. But I mean, obviously, we have to ask: Who are the celestial beings? Who is this? Where is this message coming from? Yeah. So you know, this is a, a big, a, a kind of a huge question to answer because the Rancho book uh, presents an, an, un, an unknown, unusual, uh, what you would call, might call angelology. Um, so the, the celestial hierarchy that they refer to, most of it is uh, terms that are, that are unique to the Rancho book, but many terms that we know from the Bible and from other religions are sort of brought into this and then redefined uh, for us. Uh, but many of the terms that are used in, uh, in current, uh, usage in regard to angels are not used in the Arantia book. Uh, some of the terms that are used are uh, words such as seraphim and cherubim, archangels, um, and other terms that you may not have heard of are, <clears throat> although there is a reference to this in the, in the Old Testament, there's a, a being called, beings called the ancients of days. And ancients of days are the oldest um, angelic beings in the universe of universes and uh, that's why they're called agents of days and they reside at the center of uh, of a galaxy cluster as the chief angelic administrators of a very very large uh, group of uh, of galaxies in these clusters uh, so those are the beings that uh, originally uh, instigated this revelation. So it's from a very, very high place, from the highest uh, uh, angelic beings, uh, as described in the Arantia book. But it, it mainly comes through what we call the local universe administration. And the local, a local universe in, in the Arantia book is, is a uh, unit of, of, uh, of, let's say, within the celestial hierarchy, it's a unit of 10 million and up to 10 million inhabited planets, which has its own local uh, angelic administration. So we can break that apart if you like. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Uh, so in the cosmology, I guess the first thing folks would need to get to understand this is that the Rancho book offers a very vastly expanded cosmology from what we now have, for example, the timeline of the, uh, time-space universe is much extended uh, to nearly a trillion years old, uh, rather than the current, what is a 13.7 billion years. It's uh, kind of uh, surprising how far the Ranch book extends. And uh, so uh, what it says is that um, there is a central source universe, which is not a created universe. It is uh, always existed it's eternal. It's kind of like an island. You, know, kind of, you can picture it as an island hovering in the, in the middle of the universe, but it's outside of space-time. But it's, in a sense, the geographic center of all things, and it's the ge geographic center of infinity, although that's a sort of a paradoxical notion. Uh, it's a metaphor for what this is. And this 
eternal uh, mother universe 